Welcome back to the lab. Radio. So, it's Monday. It's about, I don't know, what is it? Nine o'clock. It's about after nine o'clock. And we've got um, this week that, the Gloria, that's booked in for low volume vehicle technical association certification inspection. Um, might not be happening on Friday. That might get delayed just because of other work that's happening. Or. No one might be cranking through all this stuff and I might have to get it there. Over here is a list. Well, there's two lists really. Some things I need absolutely 100% have to do. Some things that I should do that we might get away with before certification time. Oh, let's get distracted. This thing here, so I tinkered. I tinkered some more. I did some things yesterday on my day off. <laughs> Day off from the Gloria. I put a new sensor in the back of the, in the engine bay here with our Lynx 350Z G4 Plus plug in ECU. We've now got an air temp sensor post turbo pre intercooler. So we'll know how hot the air is. I could put one on that side, but I've run out of temp sensor channels because we've got so many going on. Um, so we know how hot the air is coming out of the turbo. And we know how hot it is coming out of the intercooler. So we can see how rubbish my Chinese intercooler is. That's supposed to be rated for like 1200 horsepower. But it's a bunch of poppycock. So I just want to confirm that. I just want to prove that it's not working as good as it could be. Look at, at idle just sitting here in the garage. Once, um, once everything's up to temp in the engine bay there. We're seeing 44 degrees or something out of that turbocharger. Because the compressor housing and everything's all bolted up and hot exhaust flying through one side heats the air up even at idle sitting in the garage right so 44 through here and then we're getting about 30 coming out of there so i mean it works at five horsepower while the engine's idling but it's not working very well on the racetrack i don't think um, so we need to confirm that so we need a speedo sender of some description we don't on the back here we don't have abs tone wheels or sensors or anything. This Ford 9 inch diff with Explorer bits and pieces. I'm not sure how Ford did it in the Explorer, but whatever, whether it was off the gearbox, probably was. In the Skyline, because this is a CD009 style gearbox, but it is actually that model there. A J, what does it say? JK41A. So that's what it is, it's a JK41A. So that's from Skyline. They don't have a speedo sender in them. They don't have a drive gear. They don't have a sender unit with a tone wheel. It's nothing. So the Skyline's the 350Z's most late model Nissans. They rely on a signal through ABS tone wheel and sensors and through the ABS system via the CAN system. So we don't we don't have any tone wheels we don't have sensors we don't have any wiring we don't have an abs unit we've got nothing so going back to the back of the car again here we've got a nice nice smooth round shaft here that'll be very very easy to clamp something onto that we've got a couple of bolts here in the general area oh, there's one there there's there's a few bolts here there's five i think not a couple there yeah. probably a good idea to put it up the top there out of the way so it's not going to get smashed and we'll put a sensor in this general area here. I've got some stock, aluminium stock extrusion, billet we can call it, but it's extrusion, whatever. Um, 46 millimeter diameter hole that we've got to make in the middle of here because it's a 46 diameter shaft. So we'll make it like 45.9 or something so it clamps on there nicely. That's 50, it's 25 thick, which is too thick. Um, so we'll cut two pieces at 100 long, we'll stick those together Put some bolt holes through it, drill and tap, drill on one side, drill and tap into the other side, clamp it together, and then we can mill it down to the right thickness with our mill that's, I fixed this, it's actually working again, it broke again. Um, get it the right thickness, and then we can bang it in the lathe, and we can, which I'll have to clean up. We'll um, bore out the center of it, and then we'll make it round, and then we'll, um, screw a couple of bolts in to the side of it and those can be our pickups for our sensor it's going to be good fun all right 
two rectangles stuck together side on uh, bolts in there oh you can't see it can you see it uh, nah too dark in the hole but anyway there's one from each side and put them both on the same side because you'd have balance issues you don't want a shaky shaky drive shaft um turning between centers i've made a thing to hold that there and um the fun starts this will be scary this bit's noisy cover years now i've got to trim all the corners off that make it round going okay so far not dead yet uh you can see still a bit to come off the outside diameter but accuracy of positioning can't have been too bad based on the size of the flaps that are left there um, easier to take it off this face rather than off that face doing it that way it's a lot of um, thumping jerking a lot of vibrations whereas if you take it off that face it smooths it out make it a bit, a bit easier might be able to see the bolts in there now yeah there you go lovely let's keep going okay so it's round that's that done now i've got to change the jaws to the other style of jaws that are a bigger diameter clamp from the outside of this they're basically inverse of what these ones are so this part out here so you can clamp the outside of that and we're going to face it off and we're going to bore out the center it's too bloody nice and shiny to put underneath the car, isn't it? Look at it. Thing of beauty. You can't even see that it's two pieces. Nice. Cool, that's worked out well. They fit. Oh, why not? Let's show you. They fit quite nicely. Up in there. Like that. Heaps of room be a problem and um next step is i considered making it flush but i think what will happen is if i make my little pickup flush in here chances are we're going to pick up on this bolt while we're at it and that's going to cause all sorts of erroneous readings speedo won't be accurate so what i'm going to do i've had these bolts kicking around forever i don't know what they're from drill and tap into there one on each side and then i'll just cut these off so there's a little button i guess you'd call it a stud hanging out like that one on each side and um i don't know what's 3.358 times two is um like seven pulses per revolution of the wheel something like that is that how it works yep that'll do um and that should be pretty good it should be easy enough to sort out there we go that's beautiful so just like that. Well, actually, like that. That's forwards. So, now I'm just going to make a bracket. Like I say, I think I'll catch that bolt and that bolt and put the bracket up the top where it's nice and tidy and out of the way. And we'll use one of those generic Nissan Hall Effect sensors that seem to love causing problems everywhere else. But low frequency stuff, they're not so bad at all. Um, instead of, you know, measuring... 36 re times per revolution of the motor it's measuring two well it depends what gear it's in right so in, in fifth which is one to one it'll be two times per revolution which it should handle no problem at all okay well past knockoff time now um it's not the sexiest bracket in the world but we'll get it anodized or paint it and possibly trim that yeah i'll lock that corner there off and run that taper to there instead but that's that's the goal achieved we've got a sensor up in here can we see it oh yeah if we come around here um that's not quite lined up it looks like there's way too much clearance that's because the little button hasn't come around so there you go there Supposed to have a maximum of two millimeters. It's like about a millimeter there. Um, and let's see it on there. Boom! So I'll put that on there just to give it some guts because if we have a tire that's out of balance or we run over big potholes, we don't want the sensor coming down, crashing into the buttons and 
everything will just explode. That's a um, Bosch 101, I think they are, sensor. And I didn't use in this thing one because they do tend to fail. Um, so that one's a heavy duty motorsport type deal that won't give any trouble at all. That runs on 8 volts, not 12, not 5, runs on 8. So that's all right, it'll have its own independent power supply. Um, wire runs up through there, I've got dual core shielded wire. Tucks up there, goes through one of the original holes in the floor, uses one of, there it is there, one of the original mounts on the chassis that was still there. So it's quite handy, I'll put a grommet around that and we'll go and wire that up at the ECU um, tomorrow morning. And it's that part of the speedo system all taken care of working all right we're back into this side of things there's a few lights on there now they weren't there before that one's a bit different to the rest that one's for the alarm so we've got the alarm we've got the alternator light and we've got the park brake light the green ones that's the indicator indicator it's a blue one to tell you when you've got the lights on high beam the lights don't appear to be switching from high beam to low beam at the moment but that's no surprise the wiring's not exactly sorted so i'll figure that out in a little bit um just uh, put some power on it hooked up the laptop had a go at making these two work old mate who um built with sylvia that we stole all this stuff out of actually bought the wrong type of tachometer you can't drive that tach tachometer straight from a link ecu which is um what he had wired up, what he was intending, I never thought to check, to be honest. I thought that he would probably have got that right. Um, so I put some signals to it, wasn't working. Check the settings on the ECU and the program, and the program says quite clearly this is not going to drive a tachometer that's designed to go off the negative terminal on your coil. And I thought, yeah, let's just have a look at that before we get too far. So check the instructions for this tachometer and that's what that tachometer is. So now I've got to look into rectifying that um, with some signs of speedometer working properly. So that's good. We'll carry on with that and get that all sorted out. Uh, indicator lights work. That's good. Alternator lights are a little bit dim, but it works. Haven't started the car. Can't see whether it's going to um, do what it needs to do. Park brake light works fine there's a wire on the park brake handle you yeah, click that on and, and the light comes on straight away we've got no power on at the moment so you're not going to see that just yet um yeah so not grumpy just oh well it happens we'll get on with it and we'll sort it out all righty had dinner got a bit of time to kill fluffing around with stuff and things um speedo output we've put it on pulse width modulation test you can see i've stuck that on 120 hertz and um look at that and watch this oh look <laughs> busy clocking up k's on the odometer i better not muck around with this for too long don't want too many k's on it let's put this at oh sorry there you go you can see it now 200 and look at that we're going faster pretty good so um i'll take note of how fast we're going for a given uh, frequency and then i'll be able to work out our conversions on the drive shaft and all that on the uh two pulses per revolution of the drive shaft compared to the diff ratio compared to the tire size compared to the actual speed compared to what we need to tell this cool all right just testing everything out um got my boogie power supply to the dash here alternator lights not working correctly um, but we can fire it up we have a tachometer appears to work correctly um, engine's a bit ticky need to look into that can't run it too long um, yeah alternator light fail that's um it's not working. Alrighty. Appear to be pretty sensible numbers there. It's in fourth gear. 
seems about right to me. That'll do for now. Um, water temp might be working. Should be. It looks as though it's come up a little bit. Uh, that won't. That's mechanical. It's not attached. That's talking... Actually, that's not bad. That's probably pretty close to right. I put 30 litres in it. That might be working now. That won't because it's not plumbed in. Um, so there we go. If I bump that out of gear. That. Slows down. Yeah, it's still rolling. Put the foot on the brake and that will probably fix it. Right, okay. Let's get on with some other things. And fix this, put a normal bulb in there. Right. So, excuse the mess. Person working. Yum, yum. Turns out, three-wire alternator, bad, bad. Can't make that run properly. It'll go at 14.2 volts consistently, which is probably a little bit high. I might frazzle the battery, so that's no good. Um, can't make the alternator light work. I thought I could, and as it turns out, the D40 Navara that I did probably four years ago with a VK56DE in it, I was thinking I had made that work with a standard two-wire alternator set up on a three-wire alternator and I hadn't. I just remembered things incorrectly. So that one had a three-wire alternator from the factory and uh, I left all that wiring there and just plugged it in. I just didn't remember that. So anyway, I've gone and got a, a cheap, nasty alternator. I'm not sure if I'll actually use it. To be honest, I went and picked it up. It wasn't too badly priced, but when um, when the nut that holds the pulley onto the end of the alternator is only held on by 0.3 of a millimeter of the thread, you can actually you can slip that over if you just jiggle it the right way. <sighs> so yeah, it's actually um, it's a funny size. That's 14.8 OD. So I think the thread's just been cut wrong and then someone's used the next size up nut at the factory. They've probably done a whole batch like that. Cheap Chinese stuff. And I was saying that to be racist. That's where it's come from. And it's cheap. Um, but anyway, what I was going to do is bore the guts out of the 7PK pulley. 7 rib pulley that's on the Titan. Chew the ribs off the outside of the pulley that fits onto that alternator. Stick that on the inside of that. And give it a little bit of a tack tack weld weld. And then um, we've converted the pulley to the right size pulley. Everything else on there is going to be pretty good. The, the important mounts, they're good. Dimensions are fine. Where the pulley's going to end up in relation to these mounts, that's fine. Where the plug ends up and the power terminal ends up, it's fine. Everything there is good. Um, this is in a different spot, don't care. This bracket was custom anyway. Just drop my vivid, never mind. So I'll just make a new one of those to suit that. And we'll be away, but I'll just have a think about what I can do with this situation here. So that's that fitted. Looks quite shiny, doesn't it? It'll do. Um run out of time it's just about seven o'clock i've just got to adapt this harness to the original harness and extend or make a new uh, power cable that one's a bit short and he reaches that far needs to reach that far um also i have to make a new bracket that's in a different position my original bracket um it's amongst the mess here but it's not hard to make one of these up right but uh sorry there you go but that's no good, not even close. Not going to be a hoary bugger and put a, um, a bracket from there to there <laughs> to, to adapt it. Not going to do that. Uh, so I'll get that sorted. Right, there we go. 14.15 volts regulated. Alternator light off. Stay the same. That's on at the moment because I've bypassed the ignition. But if I turn the ignition back on, the vehicle not running. We have an alternator light going. Look at that. It's fixed. That was really easy, wasn't it? 
Not really. It might. All right. So it's um, it's like 28. So I better call it a day. Tomorrow we get to clean all that up. Now that everything works. Totally not kidding, actually about to um, attack our spaghetti here and tidy it up. Finally, uh, we've got everything functioning that needs to function. There's some things that are just wires twisted together. Um, things are going to end up in different positions, etc. And we'll get this all under control, make it all nice and tidy. Um, and take this apart and I'm going to paint that and I'm put it back together. And that'll be the last time it goes in. Um, and it's going to look all beautiful. Fans of the hectic wiring bird's nest under the dash may be disappointed to see that it's uh, basically gone, tucked up where it's supposed to be. Still looks pretty hectic, but that's old school cars. That's what they were like. Um, you can put your feet on the pedals. Could nearly drive it, except no steering wheel column's not tight yet and um there's nowhere to put your bump well yeah you sit on that It'd be sketchy wouldn't it um yeah so i've got to move across it's a little bit to do over here not too much it's actually not as bad as it might look to the untrained eye um certainly if you move a bit of fluff out of the way it tidies it up pretty quickly there's a, another wire for the alarm that i've got to tangle into all this make it all look like it was all one piece you know it was put in there by the factory but there's little things like this to sort out these kept popping out all the time when it was opening and closing the doors couldn't figure out why but if you look in the end of that it's not going to focus for you guys very nicely that close but there's half of a wire terminal in the end of that that snapped off it snapped off because if you look at the distance from that face there that I'm touching to um, the inside edge of the car and consider what happens when this will be hard to do with one hand when the door closes yeah someone's not very smart so it's busted off the um, that's half of it there busted off the terminal on the end of the switch because it's been bashing this wire into the inside of the car every time you close the door so it's just little little i'm gonna swear dumb shit like that that other people have done that actually adds hours and hours and hours to the jobs um you would have seen earlier the seat belts in the back there with the mig welding wire burnt through them and things like that the steering wheel boss um lots to do but it starts it runs wood drive haven't haven't driven it but it would um yep i'll keep going that'll do for this one we've postponed our low volume vehicle cert inspection which should have been today as you can see we're just not quite there pretty close if we if we had to present it at five o'clock and i had someone to give me a hand we probably could do that but it's not a biggie um, certainly for the most part there's huge sections of the car that you would call finished as far as low volume cert but there's also quite a lot to do to make it 100% door cards would need to go back on it's like 10 15 minute job but we want to put speakers in there so I don't really want to put them back on and take them back off again things like that so there you go alrighty I'll carry on there'll be another one all right, cheers, bye.